we've got some really good items to two obviously important uh, report outs today. Uh, criteria led discharge, which we'll go to in a moment, and uh, excellent to see Richard receiving his Lean for Leaders certificate. So, um, really important one, this next one, criteria led discharge, given all of the pressure and challenges we're facing in relation to urgent care pressures, flow, elective recovery, COVID. And at the heart of that, obviously, is uh, the challenge of developing, improving uh, our our kind of discharge arrangements. So really, really pleased to welcome all of the team on this one. And it looks like, Anna, you're poised to uh, kick us off. So I'll hand to you. Uh, thank you very much, Anna. Many thanks, Julian. So um, we've got a really good team of people um, presenting about criteria-led discharge um, this lunchtime. So um, I'll just um, enable colleagues to introduce themselves. So um, uh, and so I'm Anna, I'm a geriatrician um, and um, leading from a medical point of view this piece of work and I'll pass over to Abby to start introducing herself. Hi, I'm Abby, I'm one of the um, trainee advanced practitioners working within general paediatrics. Uh, good afternoon, I'm David Pickles, I'm the lead nurse in DIT. Hi, I'm Celia McKenzie, the head of nursing at the Children's Hospital. Good afternoon, my name is Rachel Batley and I'm the ward manager of L42, which is the children's surgical ward. Hi everybody, I'm Joe Regan and I'm director of nursing. Brilliant, so um, we'll pass on to our next slide and Abby is going to um, talk us through um, a little bit about her experience in the children's hospital. Thank you. Um, so I launched a project to implement criteria-led discharges back in 2019 and um, where we created the pathways alongside the associated governance framework. We trialled the criteria discharges um, and we were able to collect some data and following this we had this poster accepted at a conference last year. So I initiated the project and developed the idea when I started my trainee ACP uh, role um, as I was able to combine my nursing experience with experience working as part of the medical team and the current service model involved lots of um, repeated evening reviews of patients who had been identified as suitable for discharge and it was just found to be ineffective and it increased the workload on the out of hours um, medical team meaning that the reviews weren't getting done and the patients that could have been discharged were staying an extra night for no reason and the nursing team were left frustrated at having to chase the reviews. Next slide please. So a little bit about the background of the project and criteria-led discharges themselves. There are four key drivers within um, literature for the use of criteria-led discharges and their use has historically been in just elective surgical environments. So reducing the length of stay is an obvious key driver but also ensuring safety um, is essential in terms of readmission rates alongside reducing variability in care and discharge criteria. Some studies have also demonstrated significantly improved patient satisfaction uh, when comparing the group of patients who are on a criteria-led discharge pathway compared to a control group. And there's also been greater staff satisfaction with the protocols described as easy to use and practical to apply and um, also reduced bed pressures and patient flow implications. Next slide, please. So general paediatrics were identified as having a high number of discharges across the trust. So to initiate this project, we then audited our discharges and identified the common conditions we saw within general paediatrics. And these became the focus for the initial criteria led discharges. Next slide, please. And this is an example of one of the pathways we created and we created the criteria with consultant input um, based on national and local guidelines. Next slide please. And we then later also decided to use the generic sticker which had been developed in adults to allow scope outside of the four conditions. Um, however, we did find having the standardised criteria was really helpful for successful uptake. Next slide, please. We trialled the um, criteria discharges 
but the trial period wasn't the best timing as it took place from February 2020, which coincided with COVID. So we saw a reduced um, patient numbers initially. However, the average length of stay decreased from 40 hours to 32 hours, with the length of stay for patients discharged on a criteria led discharge was below this at 29 hours. We also saw a significant improvement in the number of discharges before 4 p.m., increasing to 35, um, increasing from 35% to 76%. And I think a key thing from the trial period was that the criteria led discharges really got people thinking about discharges much more. And they were more focused towards the discharge process, even if the patient themselves wasn't suitable for a criteria led discharge pathway. Next slide, please. Um, so going back to what we hope to achieve, we demonstrated a trend towards a reduced length of stay um, and we had no reattendances of any patients that were discharged on a criteria led discharge. Um, we standardised the criteria which helped to reduce variability in care provision and staff across the um, MDT multidisciplinary team gave some really positive feedback and were really supportive of their use. Next slide please. Thank you, Abby. That produced that it's a very good um, background to the how important criteria led discharge can be. And I'm just going to pass on to Dave Pickles, who is our um, lead nurse in DIT, who's going to talk about the context of this in LTHT and um, by sharing um, our video. Well, I hope at least the video illustrated that um, what was translated from paper um, was was going to be some usable is going to be some usable functionality um, in a very familiar way that clinicians are used to. Uh, it's been translated into an e-form within PPM Plus and has associated tasks um, and uh, a column on the e-whiteboard for greater visibility. And um, I just wanted to. Like this is a generic slide, but just a flag up that uh, within the PPM Plus uh, development team, there are business analysts who have worked very closely with uh, Anna and Joe and others uh, to scope the requirements for this piece. Uh, there's been extensive planning and then building of the code. And then there's also a whole team of uh, software testers uh, that test all this uh, and all this happens behind the scenes in DIT. Um, my team in, and they all deserve uh, huge credit for getting this um, uh, getting this ready. We've been piloting um, in five wards across three different CSUs. Uh, today is going to focus on the, the success within L42 and then next week uh, the functionality will be rolled out across the whole organisation. Um, 
in my team, the implementation team, I work with clinical and non-clinical colleagues uh, to support users uh, with the new functionality that's being uh, rolled out. Um, and if I can just have the next slide, the next slide just is a very, very top level plan, basically, uh, which shows some of the work that we've been doing, engaging with tri teams, uh, creating materials, including that video that you've just seen uh, to support users uh, and ready them for the um, uh, for the new functionality. And uh, and that was uh, our contribution. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. Would you progress to the next slide? Um, handing back to um, Rachel from um, the Children's Hospital. Hello, um, so we were chosen, um, I think midpoint through the rollout of the um, criteria led discharge um, pilot. Um, so we had a week to um, get all the staff involved. Um, all the videos were sent out. Um, we uh, gave it to the consultants and showed the presentation at the MDT. Um, I've got a sister who's leading for Discharge Collaborative, so she's taking it on and has been really a, a big driver in getting everybody on board. And uh, we've just recently relaunched our morning huddle and we added it to that. So it's um, been a whole MDT approach in surgery. Criteria led discharge is something that we were probably doing quite unconsciously. Um, and it's just formalised it and made it, you know, a, as planned discharges a lot better than we have before. So we're thinking two or three days in, in advance of a discharge. So we're getting specialist nurses to come to the ward a lot quicker um, than we would have. Um, EDANs are getting done and medicines are being ordered, um, which makes for much better flow through the hospital, especially at the current um, situation that we're in. We've had an amazing support from the implementation team. They have worked with us really, really well in um, when we've had struggles with getting people on board or halfway through we realized actually because of the current situations we've got quite a lot of medical lodgers with us at the moment and they have quite a specific um criteria to lead to discharge and we were missing quite a big number of patients and um, so we got them to go and join their mdt and their morning meeting do a little bit of work with them and it just um it's worked really really well next slide And that's what I was saying about the the patients that we've had lodged on the ward. So it was halfway through the first week of the pilot that we realised actually we were missing a wide range of patients. Um, and then we're renowned for not being very good at EDANs. We're very good at discharging patients and it's just made our EDAN uptake be a lot better. Um, and I have to say uh, this week specifically we had a patient that was under oncology, the bowel nurse specialists and the surgeons, really complex, lots of input from different people. The sister who was on on the Tuesday was like, oh, this patient would be brilliant for criteria led discharge, started planning, got the, dis the bowel nurses to come and do teaching and training with the mum the day before, the EDAM was written. Um, and a child that potentially would have been there for another two days went home on the Wednesday. There was a slight delay in getting some medicine, so they didn't get out by one o'clock, which was our aim. I think they left about three o'clock in the afternoon, um, but still home by three. So um, I'm really proud of my team for how they've taken this and how they've run with it. And for all the support from the implementation team, it's been a really good success and I look forward to our next pilot. Thank you, Rachel, and massive kudos and thanks to the Children's Hospital for being so fantastic um, in helping us with this particular piece of work. I'm just going to bring in um, William, um, colleague from um, TRS, just to give us a brief um, insight into his experience um, as matron leading discharge within TRS, obviously making a huge contribution to the pilot as well. Thank you. So um, we were also asked to take part in the pilot for criteria led discharge. Um, we initially planned uh, for this to follow a specific pathway, our closed ankle fractures, um, as this was, uh, it was well suited to a criteria led discharge. Um, and unfortunately, during the process of the pilot, we found that that patient group was far smaller than we had originally envisioned. Um, so we didn't get as much data as we would have liked to support the implementation of criteria led discharge. As such, um, and 
I'm the matron, one of my patches is plastic surgery. Um, I took the concept of criteria led discharge to the plastic surgeons in a consultants meeting uh, and asked for them to start identifying some pathways that we can take forward to have a wider rollout of criteria led discharge. They're very for it um, and have started bringing back said pathways. So what we hope to do is though officially our pilot um, is over, we want to carry on uh, trialling these um, plastic pathways with criteria led discharge. Uh, so hopefully we can embed that within our practice and bring back further data to everyone there. Um, but the re response has been very positive from the patients we did get, I must say. Thank you, William. That's that's really useful. So um, to sort of summarise myself and um, Joe are going to do that now. So this is a key part of our strategy to get patients home in a timely fashion, improving patient experience. And of course, we've talked about flow through our hospital to make sure we have a appropriate capacity to deal with elective patients and um, additional patients that we may, may be seeing because of COVID. And um, the crucial take home points is this enables nurse led discharge without repeated medical medical um, contact of a patient once the criteria is set, the EDAN is completed um, and authorised at the time of setting the criteria, the patient can then be freely discharged, um, improving weekend discharges, which is something very important, and also discharges in outlying patients who may not be be able to care, be cared for under the home team ward. Um, with, this is a, really quite a positive step forward for LTHT because nationally we're the first trust in the country to develop an electronic process. Um, our paper form has been, um, been utilised by other organisations, but we're the first to develop it electronically. <coughs> um, most of the evidence in the literature is within surgical pathways. However, we're rolling out this particular process and spreading it across the whole of our um, trust. Um, and we're going to gain some valuable um, insights and in how we utilise this particular process with medical patients because it absolutely can be used for medical and surgical patients um, in order to facilitate an efficient discharge. And um, we, hopefully colleagues across the country will be looking to us for our evidence to then help um, sort of feed this information na nationally. Um, and Joe, I'll just pass on to summarise in terms of how we're going to measure success um, and, and additional support required. So next slide, please, um, Natasha. Thanks, Anna. So um, I think we've covered we've covered lots um, with um, from everybody that's presented, and thank you to everybody. So you'll see from this slide that we've got a go live date of next week, the fourteenth of December. Fingers crossed, everything happens on Monday as it should do, um, and then we can press the button and, and roll that out, which is brilliant. Um, Dave and his team have agreed to give some targeted support, um, looking at the utilisation of criteria-led discharge across the CSUs, which is fabulous. Um, and we'll be looking at how we can measure this. And it's been it's been difficult understanding how we can measure this because we don't really have any benchmarking that we that we can look at so we are going to we obviously we'll be looking at the utilization of CLD um, and how that increases over time the discharges before 3 p.m um, which will make a huge difference to patients flow as we've said um, and out of hours moves as well if we can just bring those discharges forward earlier in the day we can reduce those out of hour moves as well and also weekend discharges as we all know you know on a weekend we see a real slowdown don't we in patients going home and then it picks up again on monday morning so we'll, you know to be able to measure that and to get some patients home on the weekend will be fantastic there's lots of resources available they're all on the intranet and the links on on that slide there so I think that's all I have to say, really, unless anybody's got anything else to say. And I'm sure the team will be open to take any questions. Fantastic. Thank you, Joe. Really good. Thanks very much, Anna, Abby, David, Celia, Rachel, Joe, William, colleagues. Um, really, really good uh, overview and kind of depth and detail around the impact of this and how we're working. And I'm sure all of us would want to support this work. So please do draw on. Uh, I know you are already, but all of our collective support for this and great to see the widespread engagement and support. Really, really good. And some really nice examples as well. And pleased to hear, William, about the plastic surgeon's response. That sounds really positive in terms of looking at those criteria for for, for the plastic pathways. Great stuff. So um, what I'm sure there will be questions, but as usual, 
Um, we'll take those at the end. So if you're ready to uh, pick up any of those. But before we go to Q&A, I wanted to offer a sincere congratulations to our latest Lean for Leaders graduate. And it's great uh, that we're able uh, to recognize Richard, um, Mr. Richard Baker. I think he's easy on screen. There he is, there he is, excellent. Congratulations, Richard, really well done. Thank you. And particularly, I think in your position where you've got um, a huge amount on as CD, uh, as well as your clinical uh, workload, but in addition, finding the time, carving out enough time to, 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 to do this and um, integrate it into the work that I know you're doing in AMS. So really well done. Just as we usually do, any opportunity for you to kind of offer a few reflections on maybe some of your key learning points and how you see using the um, the, the learning you, that you've developed mo moving forward? Um, yeah, I think, I mean, my sort of time during the Lean for Leaders course, um, obviously sort of most of it was pre-pandemic, which was thus the, the slight delay. But um, when I first started, it did feel fairly abstract, fairly um, you know, kind of theoretical and a bit distant to what we were doing. And it was only really with, um, I mean, I guess with time, with the way that the, the whole organisation has matured along with it, but then actually getting into a more senior leadership post, you actually could see that it is a very real tool and hopefully um, we do use it every day. It's our approach to to change. It's our approach to problems. So um, it's, I think just, just from the kind of, you know, the first, those of you who've done Lean for Leaders, and most of you probably on the, who are interested on this call have, the first kind of couple of sessions, you know, it's all kind of so weird and so, you know, the kind of the Japanese terms, and you're like, well, what is, where are we going with this? Um, but then, it, you know, it becomes real, and then when you actually start using it for real um, and to actually make significant changes, then that's really when it comes into its own, and now it's, hopefully, it's... Um, you know, it's just it's just every this is every things everyday business. So I, I've thought I find it really valuable. If only I mean I say to people who are perhaps, um, you know, not in kind of massively senior influential um, leadership positions, just understanding the language and understanding what how simple it is to do some of these things is is enormously uh, important. You know, so just understanding about how to do a PDSA, how you know everyday lean ideas, all these kind of things. Um, a massive and every, every I guess that the whole Virginia Mason ethos is that everybody knows about it and everybody's doing it and that's why it's so powerful um, so even though my personal experience it became more real to me in a leadership position I don't think that we should take that away as the message you know it's 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 a huge, it's a great tool and it's it's you know it's, it for me it's lead for leaders these kind of lean methods the leads improvement method and the leads way is this is the way this is what we're all about isn't it so um i think yeah. it's great and everyone should take right. that and thanks for the kpo team for uh pulling me over the line <laughs> <laughs> i think we uh, yeah we all owe them don't we uh, great that's great richard many thanks and and congratulations and it's really good as well to see the extent of you know our clinical leaders who are now lean for leaders graduates and also uh, you know, our, our consultant colleagues, because uh, I think medical engagement's crucial in, in all of this as well, uh, as in terms of um, that going alongside the um, the kind of role of, of, of senior medics in the organisation. And, and indeed, I think for all clinicians, it's, uh, it's really good to see how standard work and daily management's uh, making a difference. So many, many thanks and well done. So we're up to... Uh, I think we've got we've got a few minutes for questions. So lots lots to tuck into this lunchtime at today's report out. So who'd like to kick off, Jenny? Julian, I'm so sorry I was late. So I only caught halfway through the discharge work. So this might have been covered. Um, but I was with the phlebotomy team earlier in the week, and Anna, they love the work that they're doing with you and how you're involving them. I've, am I on the same bit of work or am I on a different bit of work? Either this way, is, um, say this is, yeah, this is, oh, that's, that's lovely. Um, it's, this is about criteria of discharge, but I suppose it all connects to um, the same ultimate goal, um, which is efficient discharge. Um, yeah, absolutely. 
it felt so important to just be connecting everybody. So even if it's not specifically here, I love how you're managing to bring everybody into that very complex bit of bit of um, clockwork, really. So I just want to say thank you. And Richard, I thought that was thought that was awesome. Well done. Congratulations. Oh, the KPO need to help me get over the line as well. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, so who else would like to ask a question or offer a, a comment to um, on the discharge work or indeed to Richard on Need for Leaders, Simon. Thanks, Julian. Yeah, well, first, congrats, congrats to Richard. That's really fantastic. And then in terms of the, the uh, discharge work, it'd be really great, Anna, if uh, at a certain point in time, I know you'd be feeding back on the impact, but if we can uh, look at that also from a, a waste reduction, uh, well, it is a waste reduction thing, isn't it? But from a, it'd be really great to be sort of uh, be able to uh, do a piece where we say, well, we've done this, it's had this impact, and therefore, and thus, it's had this, reduce this financial pressure, which it, it will do, because it will uh, reduce length of stay. And uh, really encouraging, uh, looking at the, the early work and the testing that's been done, the, the potentiality for, for that. So I'm really, uh, really excited, and uh, thanks so much for the work, everybody. Can I ask, um, <clears throat> can I ask you a question, David, just on, um, oh, Paul's, Paul wants to come in. I'll I'll save my question and and Paul, you go. No, no, I was only, I was going to come in after you. To be honest, I, I just wanted to flag that I put a little article into the chat that, um, as Anna mentioned, this is the first example of this being digitised. Um, yeah. Other people have got paper. Uh, we did visit some other trusts as part of our uh, requirements gathering for this, and we're told it was impossible to digitise. Apparently. <laughs> so, uh, so there you go. And there's a little article in Health Tech News uh, about what we've done. So no, I think it's fantastic from the team. And then I think hopefully we're, we're going to go live with it across the trust uh, on Monday. And and one of the reasons we can do that is that the PAS upgrade went so smoothly over the weekend that we uh, we don't feel the need to kind of protect the service beyond uh, this week and that we can start yeah. up to, to new functionality being added. So uh, you know, Brilliant. Good, good timing all around. That's really, really encouraging, Paul. I was actually going to ask David um, how how that you know the the PPM plus the digitization of this, which looks really good, David. How 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 difficult was that? You know what 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 um you know how much of a, a challenge was it for you, and how did you overcome those challenges? Uh, well, I can't take any credit for any of the technical stuff. That was all done by the um, by the developers, um, and they do uh, incremental um, uh, improvements to the PPM all the time. Um, and I think that this follows some of the usual pattern um, of uh, of development. However, the, the crucial thing to say is that it's the first um, form to use the new dashboard and widget functionality, uh, okay. um, and that's where um, that's where clinicians are presented with. Uh, related data uh, that are going to be useful uh, all on one page uh, together yeah. that they can interact with uh, and that's a real bonus and, and clinicians are going to be able to see that going forward in, in other iterations like the EDAM and also yeah. the ward round um, the ward round dashboard and other functionality to, that's going to come along um, Paul had his hand up I'm guessing he was probably going to say the same <laughs> <laughs> yeah it looks like he was because he's put it down now <laughs> <laughs> thanks David that's great and uh, I mean, uh, what strikes me about this is just the quality of teamwork between the different um, disciplines and across different CSUs, Anna. And, you know, you've described how different colleagues are played into it. It's really, really good. And I'm sure we'll see that develop as you were describing, Joe, in next steps. So really excellent work. So yeah. let's. Um, sorry, did you want to come in on that? No, I was just going to say absolutely. I mean, I've developed a, um, or helped develop um, various electronic things um, in the past, mortality screen tool, various other things. I have to say this is, I don't know if it's because we've, we're more used to doing it now, but it's been an absolute pleasure working with um, Dave and the team. Myself and Joe have, um, you know, found it uh, and also all of our wonderful colleagues in the children's hospital and elsewhere. So yeah, um, yeah, it's been it's been something that's hope boosted morale. Um, and ho mm -hmm. Hopefully, going to help um, across the organisation. So yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Well, we're we're just past the hour, so we'll 
we'll finish there. And can I just say uh, an enormous thank you to uh, all of you who have joined, particularly those of you who've reported out, um, all of you involved in criteria-led discharge, Richard for um, qualifying and uh, uh, graduating as our, our new Lean for Leader. Uh, and please join us next time at the next report out on Friday the 17th of December. Um, last report out, will it be the last one of 2021? I'm not sure, probably. Uh, but um, yeah, so do make it, make a date, join us then. And thank you once again to the KPO team for facilitating this. It's, it's, it's one of the highlights of my week. I hope it is for you. And uh, it's great to see while we're under such operational pressure, we're still doing great work and improving all the time. So many, many thanks to you all. Take care.